I want to talk about some of your projections. You're saying Uber will hit $5 billion in EBITDA in a couple of years. That's many, many times more what Uber is doing today, but light of what some analysts expected. You got the stock down now two days in a row, already down again this morning. What do you think it is that investors aren't seeing? You know, it's tough to tell as far as market short term goes, as you know, with interest rates uh, increasing, inflation expectations increasing. I think the market has been uh, a difficult market for a lot of companies out there. But if you look at the fundamentals of Uber, not only long term, but even this last quarter, uh, we had our audience grow by 27 percent on a year on year, uh, year on year basis. We had gross bookings. Uh, highest ever, almost $26 billion, up 50% uh, year on year. And we had our second uh, quarter of profitability, and we projected this $5 billion target uh, ahead of us. All of the metrics as it relates to the business are headed in the right direction. Uh, I can't predict market movements short term, but long term, you see stocks move with the fundamentals. And right now, the fundamentals are absolutely going the right way with Uber. You said prices are starting to come down, but inflation is hitting record levels elsewhere. And I'm wondering if you're concerned that that's going to hurt demand coming back from the platform because your riders are paying more for everything else. If anything, right now, I think I think it's a great concern theoretically. But if anything, our marketplaces have been more supply constrained than demand constrained. We had plenty of demand come in both for ride share. We've had plenty of demand come in for delivery as well. And as you can see, the top line is super healthy. What we had historically had a tough time with was getting as many drivers and couriers to join the network uh, as we wanted to. I think the good news for us now is we're up to 4.4 million earners on the platform. We added 325,000 earners onto the platform last quarter. And as a result, the marketplace is becoming more balanced. I do think inflation is here to stay. But for us, it's about balancing both supply and demand. And right now, that balance is in a really, really good place. Dara, good morning. It's Guy in London. Um, Uber is a, I guess what we would call in the financial markets, a long duration business. We're looking further out for profitability for the big returns that are going to come towards us as the business matures. As interest rates go up, that potentially becomes tougher and tougher. You're, you, you said a moment ago you, you see sort of near-term volatility, but you're more confident in the long term. What gives you that confidence in the long term? It would seem like a tough moment in time to have longer-term projections. Well, I think we're seeing it in the business right now. The business is coming back faster uh, than ever before. We're at record gross bookings uh, levels. And we said, actually, that we're going to hit free cash flow positivity this year. So I think with uber you have the balance of hey in the short term what have you done for me lately we're delivering profits we're going to deliver uh cash flow profitability our q1 is stronger than q4 that's not true for some of our competitors and at the same time we're putting a marker down on long-term growth of 22 uh, to 26 percent and significant incremental profits as the business grows so i think we're a balanced story which is you want improvement next quarter, you want improvement next year, you got it, but you want long-term growth, five to 10 years with increasing margins, we have that as well. I think if we deliver on both the short and the long-term, we're gonna be just fine. You talk about that balance. Can I just talk about the balance within the business right now? Delivery obviously was a huge hedge for you during the pandemic. It is delivery and ridership on a, full, a sort of fulcrum. Do, do, does one go up and the other one go down and vice versa as we come out of the pandemic? And what happens with ride sharing as well as we come out of the pandemic as well? Where does it fit into that? Is there a long term dent because of the pandemic or does that start to fade fairly quickly? We're seeing so I think that from a long term standpoint, both ride share and delivery are on a long term glide path up. And especially as it relates to mobility, we're adding taxis, we're uh, adding two wheelers, three wheelers, we're adding shared rides, we're adding reserve, we're, we're up, we're innovating around the mobility sector pretty aggressively. And the same thing with delivery, which is people want more stuff delivered to their homes within an hour and we're adding grocery and alcohol and many, many other categories. So you're going to see both of them move up. 
but cyclically based on openings and closings, while one is strong short term, the other one uh, maybe a hedge the other way. And I think to some extent we're seeing it in Q1, which is the Omicron wave hit. Obviously, things are getting much better now. But for example, a rideshare competitor in the U.S. is going to have their EBITDA down Q Q1 versus Q4 while ours continues to rise. So what I talked about with our investors is we're an all-weather company. You get secular growth of mobility and delivery, and whether or not the world is open or closed, the two hedge against each other so that you've got predictability and strong long-term growth. Dari, you've got a huge Super Bowl ad campaign featuring Gwyneth Paltrow, Trevor Noah, Cousin Greg. Cousin Greg is in there trying to drive the point home that Uber Eats delivers more than things that you can just eat. How big a business do you think non-food delivery can be as part of Eats? And is all this marketing spend paying off? I mean, these are pricey celebrities. No, they really they are, but they're but they're worth every penny. We're seeing Uber Eats. It's it's absolutely becoming a cultural phenomenon. And the tonight I'll be eating campaign. We wanted to throw this other twist because our non-food product it's at a four billion dollar run rate. It's growing very very quickly. We're really doubling down on grocery and other products as well. And we wanted to get that awareness out there. What we're seeing is that consumers who buy start buying groceries and other items on Uber Eats actually start using Uber Eats more and more. So not only is it a, is it a new growth path for us, it actually cements our relationship with our customers and could be another growth path going forward. Uh, the ad has gotten great response, uh, and we're looking forward to the Super Bowl. We're preparing for an onslaught of crypto and metaverse ads, and I'm wondering if any of this has convinced you. Is there any chance of Uber accepting Bitcoin in the future? Are you having conversations about this internally? Like, could it happen someday? Uh, it definitely could. We're having conversations all the time. I think right now what we see with Bitcoin and some of the other cryptos that they are quite valuable as a store of value. The exchange mechanism is expensive. It's not great for the environment. As the exchange mechanism uh, becomes less expensive, becomes more environmentally friendly, I think you will see us lean into crypto a, a little bit more. So we're absolutely watching it. And if you say, is Uber going to accept crypto in the future? Absolutely. At some point. This isn't the right point, but we will. OK, we'll look forward to that moment and you updating us as to when it's going to be, Dara. Uh, I sense there's some vagueness around that at the moment. Um, can I take you to London, where, where I am right now? You're backing the mayor of London's plans to shift uh, the way that we charge the congestion charge is likely to go. We're likely to shift potentially uh, to a pay-as-you-go, a pay-per-drive, pay-per-mile uh, type of model. A, do you think backing the mayor, Sadiq Khan, is going to help you in terms of your license renewal, which I think is coming up uh, in March? And I'm also wondering kind of the bigger picture here. If we head towards this kind of model in London, is that a big step towards pooling? Because I'm assuming that that would be a huge step forward for Uber. Definitely. We're backing the mayor because we, we think these kinds of charges, it's the right way forward. Uh, congestion is not good for the city. It's not good for Uber. And what we believe in is that, you know, the vehicles with the greatest amount of utility should be the ones that use the roads. I think utility increases as vehicles become more environmentally friendly. So 10 percent of our kilometers now in London are uh, EV uh, vehicles, and we're going to keep pushing that up. And I absolutely do believe that pooling creates more utility, more than one person in a car. And that is a, an area of the business that we're investing in. We're also actually investing in a lot of developing markets in high capacity vehicles. Can you get, you know, 10 people in a bus and you can call it Uber bus, but it, but it uses a technology that we have in terms of routing, pricing, matching and takes it to the next level. Uh, so we're looking forward to partnering with London going forward. And uh, congestion, again, lowering congestion is in everyone's interest. Uh, last quick question, Dar. Your head of mobility, Andrew McDonald, said getting taxi drivers will unlock that next chapter of growth. And I'm curious what you're prepared to offer them, given that taxi drivers, many of them around the world, don't have a lot of fun things to say about Uber. Well, I think that what we have to offer them is more demand, uh, and and it's essentially e-hail riding demand. 
ultimately, whether you're an Uber driver or you're a taxi driver, uh, you want to get paid for your time. And time with your car empty is not constructive. It's not good for anyone. It's not good for the environment as well. We are now building out tool sets that are specially dedicated to taxi fleets so that you as a consumer, if you want to take a taxi or you want to take an Uber, you want to reserve, you can. So it's great for the consumer. But taxi fleets hopefully will work with us. And as they do, they'll get more demand, which we think is a win-win.